Here I'll show you how to run macros at set intervals in Excel. So let's say every 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 1 hour, 3 hours, whatever interval you want. So right here we've got a little pop-up window as the example and it's going to run every 5 seconds. I'll show you how to make this work through keyboard shortcuts, through buttons like this in the workbook where you can start and stop it, and also make it so that it starts right when the workbook opens. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. I'm going to show you the three different ways to have this run and then after that I will go through all of the code and explain exactly how it works. That's good if you want to change it for your situation. But if you do not care how it works, and you just want to get the code, just download the workbook, copy and paste it, and you're good to go. So here I've got a couple macros that I'll show you momentarily. And the keyboard shortcut method, it's just pretty simple. You just go to the Run Macro window, Alt-F8. And what you want to do here is you want to go to Macro Timer. So you do not want to run My Macro. You want to run the Macro Timer. Click Run and the macro will begin after the interval. So it's not going to run immediately, only after the interval. Hit OK, keeps running, and if you want to stop it with the keyboard shortcuts, Alt F8, and go to Stop Macro. To have that work with buttons, you just go to the Insert tab, go to Illustrations, Shapes, get yourself a rounded rectangle, pop that guy right in here, type whatever you want, now you got yourself a button, right click it, go to assign macro, and for the start button, you want to do macro timer, for the stop button, stop macro. Easy peasy. So let's delete that guy because we already have our buttons. Now let's make it run when the workbook opens automatically. So here we have to go to the VBA window, hit Alt F11. Here you'll see the macro, but you don't have to do anything with it right now. We've got our macro timer, my macro, and stop macro. What you want to do is go to this workbook, where it says General, click that and click Workbook. And it should say Workbook Open by default. If it doesn't, go over here to the right and just select Open. Now what we can do here, very, very simple, Call Macro Timer. So the same macro that you would have clicked when you used the keyboard shortcut Alt F8 or assigned to a button to start the macro. Just type call and macro timer. What's going to happen now is every time the workbook opens, it will run whatever code is in here. So it says call macro timer, goes over here to module one, and then we have macro timer, then it runs this dude here. So that's all you have to do. Now one note for having a macro run when a workbook opens, people can turn macros off. So you cannot guarantee that this code will always run. If they have macros disabled, can even happen by default for security reasons, then the macro is not going to run. There are ways to force the user to enable macros in order to use a workbook, which I've explained in other tutorials I'm not going to cover here. It's pretty cool how to do that actually. But just know that you can't guarantee that this is actually going to run. Now I'm going to go ahead and comment this out so it does not run by default when you get this workbook. Let's go ahead and kill that extra space. And all right, now that we are here, and I've showed you the three ways you can have it run, keyboard shortcuts buttons, or workbook open. Now there are many other ways to have it run, but these are three big basic ways. Probably covers 90% of the cases when you want a macro to run from an interval. But now that I've showed you that, let's go and get our feet wet with the macro. So when you download the workbook, just go to module one. I'm gonna go ahead now and close this guy. And this is what you're going to see. And you can just copy paste this into your own workbook, do whatever you want with it. You do not need to continue with this tutorial if you don't want to learn how it works. This series of macros is a very similar to the countdown timer I showed you how to do not that long ago. Basically, we use the same technique, which is application.onTime. So if you understand exactly how that works, then it'll be easier to understand this. If not, don't worry. Now, this is a slightly different structure from the countdown timer. So it looks a little bit different. I've got an extra macro in here, but I think it works quite well for this situation. So let's start with the macro timer because that's what we set to the start button and so on. So this dude right here, macro timer, is what actually controls the interval. And 
which macro will run. So here we've got our interval, which is just the current time right now, plus whatever we want. Here it is set to five seconds. You could set it to whatever. You've got hours, minutes, seconds right here. So maybe I will add a note, set your interval here. And now that we have an interval, we can use that interval in application.onTime. This is what allows you to do something, to run a macro so many seconds, hours, minutes in the future. And here we have a very simple implementation of it. We do application.onTime. We tell it when we want it to run, which is right now, plus five seconds. And we tell it what we want it to run, which is my macro. This is the name of the macro that you want to run. So my macro, my macro. So this right here, it says, in five seconds from right now, run my macro. Five seconds will pass, and we get to my macro. Now in the countdown timer, these two macros were one. And the big difference was that then, this macro code, which is right here, would run immediately after it was called. Here, however, we wait for the interval to pass until we run the macro code at least once. So it will wait for the first interval, five seconds, before this macro down here is run at all. So that's the really big distinction. It doesn't run immediately once it's triggered. But now that we're down here into my macro, basically, very simple, we have some code, whatever code you want to run right here, and then at the very end of it, just call the timer macro again. So I've made it a very simple macro right here. It's just going to open a message box for us so that we know that the code has run. Message box, this is my sample macro output, but you can do whatever you want. You can even call another macro if you wanted to, keep all the code isolated over there. And then once it runs this code, and it's very important, once it runs the code, then it will call the macro timer again. Now this code can take a long time to run. It's going to stop you from doing anything else for the most part in Microsoft Excel while it runs. Then when it finishes running, it's going to call macro timer again and restart the interval. What this means is technically the intervals could be longer than you specify right here. So if you set a five second interval but the macro takes 30 seconds to run, well, it's not going to work exactly how you expect it. So you do need to take note of that. You do need to be careful and test your macro, see how it's going to work, especially if you're going to deploy it onto machines that aren't particularly fast. So in my macro, we have the code to run, then we just recall macro timer, and this is how the loop works. But eventually you want to stop the loop, so we get to the next macro, which is just stop macro. And here, I'm going to skip this line for a moment, we reference application.onTime once more. So this right here is the same as this dude up here, but we are going to use a little bit of a different way to reference the arguments. So up here I have interval and then my macro. Down here I have earliest time, colon equals interval, procedure, colon equals my macro and then schedule colon equals false. This is another way to input the arguments, and we do it here because we don't include all of the arguments in order. So there's another argument between schedule and procedure. Now, maybe you don't need to know that, it's not a big deal, but basically the thing is here we add one additional thing, schedule false. And what these names are, earliest time, procedure, and schedule, they are the name of the arguments. So if you go to DuckDuckGo and search for MSDN Excel VBA application on time, you'll see a good little list of the arguments, earliest time, procedure, latest time, and schedule. So we just put the name of the argument, a colon, and an equal sign, and then the value that we want for that argument. So this right here, is another way, essentially, of putting this in there. So it's another way to use this method. So earliest time equals interval, our procedure is my macro, and schedule is false. So we want to kill it, stop it from running. So that's all there is for this macro, okay? And there is one little thing that we do take care of, 
and we do that using on error resume next. If you hit, let's say you use stop buttons in the workbook and you hit the stop button, but nothing was running, it will throw an error. And it's a real ugly error, it doesn't look very nice. So I'll show you what that looks like right now. Put a comma here, Alt F11, or go back here. Let's just hit, well, let's do, do it the right way. First start, our macro is running, a couple more seconds, okay. Now we hit stop, no problem, all is good. Our macro has stopped. Now let me hit it one more time. Error. Method on time of object application failed. Debug. Okay, we got a problem. So, the easiest way to get rid of this issue is to type on error resume next. What it means is, hey, if you see an error, instead of stopping the application and confusing the heck out of the user, just continue. Pretend the error didn't happen. Now, if you have a really big macro, that can cause a lot of problems, okay? That's why this is the quick and dirty trick to ignore, ignore errors. However, here we have a very small macro. It only has one line. So when it continues next, it's not going to any additional code. So on error resume next, no problemo here. And what it's going to allow us to do when we go back to here, we start the macro. All is good, should run momentarily. There we go. Hit stop, okay. Now hit stop one more time. No errors, as many times as I want, and we don't have that nasty thing that sends us back to the VBA window. So, Alt F11 to go back here. All right, and that is how stop macro works. Now let's cover interval. Interval is actually a variable now that goes between all of these macros or whichever macro uses it, which is stop macro and macro timer. So we have interval up here above all the macros, public interval as date. What that means is that all the macros can use it, which is required in order to stop something that was started using application.onTime. So here we set the interval. It's now stored up here publicly. We use it down here, application.onTime, all is good. And then when we want to stop the macro, we call that variable one more time. You can see that interval is not set down here in this macro at all. So we make a global variable so that we can set it in one macro and use it in another macro. And I think that pretty much covers it for this macro. It's a robust little macro. It's pretty cool. And it allows you to run other macros at set intervals. The one thing to always remember, though, is that when you make macros in Microsoft Excel, you can never actually control the complete environment. The user can disable macros. The user can close the program unexpectedly. Things can happen. But that's all for this tutorial, and I hope you found it helpful. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.